My senses have picked up something. Traitor! Mm, hasn't respawned yet. Okay. and that's all you buy. I'll sell you goods, but if you cross me, you'll meet the wrong end of my 44. Careful out there, you won't want to get hurt. You got any books for me? Yep. Let's go. There you go. Ready? Yep. Hit it? Yep. A sale is a sale, even if it's to a scumbag like you. Don't let the door hit you on your way out. Ready to take some back? Sure. There you go. Anything good to sell? Not really. Ooh, I found a yellow bag. We need water filters. Ah. <laughs> uh... We'd have to build an addition to fit them, but that's up to you.
No, they don't need to rework the vehicle handling in Cyberpunk. They need to rework the guy behind the wheel. <laughs> They've already reworked the vi the um, vehicle handling. No refunds. Deal it's better done. than it used to now be, it, which fucker. is saying something. Motorcycles and heavy vehicles uh, feel good. It's normal cars and sports cars that are impossible to control. Show off. Well, I have a laser pointer on mine, so... <laughs> Makes it a yeah, little that easier. Helps. All right, where are we going? Let's go west. Okay. Every time you make that turn, it just puts me face first right into the razor wire. Nice. It's rather disconcerting. It doesn't actually hurt you, does it? No, but... Also not comforting, either. <laughs> no. <laughs> Makes me want to duck. They did say to Talon that uh, they are actively working on the sequel to Cyberpunk, so that's a good sign. I think if they end up making it a long-term series like The Witcher is, it'd be really cool if they did like two or three games in Night City as like some kind of longer form trilogy kind of thing. And then I think it'd be really cool if after that they go to another location. It does kind of make sense to stay in the U.S. though, because it's a lot easier to say that, like, there's all these different gangs of different uh, ethnic backgrounds. You've got the Japanese, you've got the Chinese, you've got the Latin, you've got the Russians, uh, and that all works all really easily in the United States, and in other parts of the world it wouldn't work quite so well. Not sure I like the uh, implication that the Japanese are going to take over the world. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> they definitely have the desire to do so, that's for sure. There's a strong, um, like, Arasaka is, is the Japanese megacorp, and it's definitely one of the most powerful, but, um, that's why they do a lot of focus on the Militech side of things as well, because... Master, we are not alone. 
make sure I get this fixed. Oops, I locked it. Uh, unlock. Because uh, Militech is like their... That's like the North American competitor for them. And, and that's like their biggest rival. We're headed for the snow biome. Yeah. spent a lot of time in the snow biome, have we? Not really. I guess we could always go to, um... We could always go to Europe in in a cyberpunk game. That would be interesting. You can get a lot of cultural references there. My senses have picked up something. Me too, Talon. You've seen, um... What's the futuristic movie with Harrison Ford in it from the 70s? Blade, Blade Runner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen Blade Runner, right? I think what would be a, uh, a really cool idea is... Like, there's, there's those enormous buildings in Blade Runner that look like, you know, small cities just to themselves in one building. Uh, I think it would be really cool if they did that for, like, uh, let's go. We do need to kind of map out the snow area. Um, I think it'd be really cool... Rather than going to Tokyo or some other city in Japan as a as a full game, is you could have like a DLC where you travel to Japan, but you don't actually leave. You, you like go into one building and then the entire DLC is in this enormous mega structure. Uh, and you have to like, there's like mission hubs and you have to go up to like the 96th floor to do stuff. I think that could work pretty well. Then they don't have to rebuild an entire city from scratch. They could just build a... a skyscraper. Didn't Judge Dredd do Mega Cities? I haven't watched a lot of Judge Dredd, to be honest. I know that's kind of blasphemy and all, but...
My senses have picked up something. Uh oh. Watch out. Turning around. Stand by. What the hell? Uh, yeah, there you go. Alright. Uh, okay, we need to. We're, we're as far south as we can go. Yeah. Yeah, but they could do something like um, a DLC where you go to like a... I don't know if this is a real term or if I pulled this from a video game, but you could go to a... What would equate to a Japanese arcology? Where it's like, it's a mega building where people never have to leave. They could be born, be educated, work, eat, all in one building never leave for their entire lives. This sounds so boring. I've got a bad feeling about this. I know some places are trying to like develop buildings like that now. Not necessarily like where you don't ever have to leave, but like where you you don't have to leave very often. Where like you can have the office that you work in is in the same building where your apartment is, and there's also, like, restaurants in the building. It does seem kind of dull and boring, I'm not going to deny that, but... We just keep going this way. But I mean, it's very, it's, that concept has a very dystopian feel to it. And that would fit well with the genre. It's wild is realizing that uh, Blade Runner is going to be known as one of Harrison Ford's lesser known movies. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? <laughs> it's always kind of bummed me out that science fiction has been a uh, has always been like a niche genre. Yeah. You know, it doesn't get the respect that, like, a lot of other genres do. I mean, even fantasy adventure gets more respect. Yeah. Than sci-fi. And just wait, you're going to have the people come out of the woodwork that are like, well, what about Star Wars? That's culturally, culturally re relevant. And it's like, yeah, but Star Wars is much more of a fantasy story than it is a sci-fi story. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's a, it's a fantasy story with a sci-fi coat of paint over it. I think Star Trek is a much more sci-fi series. Yeah, yeah. To me, it, it is. But that may just be because everything's on the move in Star Trek. Something. Nothing's really static. Except, you know, 
like when you're on a station like deep space nine what was the movie that had mechanical spiders that would inject acid into people and had tracking bullets that does not ring a bell what the hell what the heck are you talking about not a movie I'm familiar with you name any actors that were in it? Maybe that'll jog my memory as to what you're talking about? Runaway with Tom Selleck? You expect me to be familiar with a sci-fi movie starring Tom... Selleck. Sorry. Not gonna happen. It came out in 1984? Bro, I was one. Let's go. <laughs> Tom Selleck. Wow, dude. Hey, Tom Selleck had his day. I'm not saying he wasn't cool in his day, but like... His day was not in my lifetime. It's Well, it was technically in my lifetime, but... It was when I was a baby. <laughs> Blade Runner was 1982? Okay, but that's like saying... Like... Hey man, you know Gone with the Wind, why don't you also know this really obscure movie from the 70s? Uh, and it's like... What? Well, it, it came out after Gone with the Wind. You know every movie, right? And to be fair, Mom, Tom Selleck is still a hot guy. Well. He's one of those... Like... He may not be... Uh, like, A-list... Top billing kind of person anymore, but he's also one of those dudes that's like... He didn't age poorly, either. Yeah, like, uh, he's an 80s heartthrob. Yeah. Meaning he's a heartthrob in his 80s. Yeah. <laughs> about this. He was one of those guys that aged like George Clooney is aging. Yeah. Where, where it was like when, when he was in his 60s and stuff, you were like, damn, for 60, he looks really good. Yeah. All right, what are we looking at here? We're looking at getting attacked from behind. No, we're not. <laughs> All right, that covered most of the West Coast. There's a wandering horde just ahead to the right. Tom Selleck was only hot because of the stash, but he still has the stash. I don't want to drive. You're probably going to age like milk. <laughs> Most people age like milk. 
I already know I'm gonna have, like, those stereotypical old man droopy jowls. Because, like, right now you can, like, pull on my jowls and you can, like, pull them, really, like, far down and stuff. And I'm like, that's not gonna bode well when my skin stops becoming hey, elastic. Hey, that's what the beard's for, boy. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just have a droopy beard. Got it. <laughs> Who's that guy that's, uh, he's like the Western kind of guy that was in, uh, Cappy, Cappy might know him. He was in Big Lebowski as the narrator. He's got that really long cowboy-esque mustache. Oh, Sam oh, Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott? Well, it was either that or Wilford Brimley. No, not Wilford Brimley. <laughs> <laughs> Those are two different sides of the spe same spectrum there. Yeah. No, Sam Elliott, that's a dude that, like, he aged perfectly, because it's like, you look at him now, you're like, damn, that's... That is still a sexy looking guy. Although I think he's dead now. No, I don't think so. No? Okay. I don't think he is. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. He's 79 right now? Okay. Just like, there's that group of guys who age like fine wine. And you're just like, man, screw My those guys. Up something. Well, Why there's you... women that do the same thing. You know, that are still beautiful when they're in their 80s. Yeah. God, I hate those women. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Cage? No! Nicholas Cage has always been weird. Nicholas Cage is a silver fox? I think not. No, 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 no. Oh, it was a joke. Oh, I thought you were serious. I was going to be like, what the hell? Nicolas Cage is one of those guys that has, like, the weirdest, uh, the weirdest, like, pivots in his career. He'll have some of the coolest, like, best movies for, like, two or three years in a row, and then he'll just take, like, six movies that are just like, what the heck is this? This yeah. is the dumbest shit I have ever seen. He's got another movie coming out? Of course he does. He's always working. But it's like there for a while he was he was hot shit. He was in a lot of movies that were like all really popular and stuff. And then 
he just started taking really strange roles and you're just like, what the heck is this guy doing? Yeah, he probably just wanted to stretch himself. Uh-huh. And then there's the guys that should have been real hot stuff, like Mel Gibson. Well, that's self-inflicted. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's self-inflicted. That's yeah. Master, we are not alone. Mel, G uh, Mel Gibson was hot shit for a while. Yeah. And then he went off and shot himself in the foot like an idiot. Now he's able. He's he's like transitioning to uh, to directing, and he's able to get more jobs doing that just because his, you know, he's a director and his face isn't on the poster. Yeah. Well, he knows that uh, he's ruined his reputation as an actor. Oh yeah. I mean, nobody wants to see a, the next Mel Gibson movie. No, not really. I watched this, uh, I watched this YouTuber that, uh, he's a professional film critic, and, um, he lives in Arkansas now, surprisingly enough. Hmm. Uh, but he, he, like, moved there during the pandemic to be close to his family. But, uh, he has very similar movie opinions to Cappy and me. Um, so we, we enjoy his videos because like when he'll talk about a movie and about, you know, I really like this movie for, for this, that, and the other reason we'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, we'll give it a shot. Um, but he had, he had watched a couple of the Mel Gibson directed movies and he's like, you know, I don't like the guy personally, but he seems to be a really good director. So at least he's got that going for it. Well, I think a lot of actors make good directors because they've <laughs> they've known so many bad directors in their career. Yeah, yeah they, they know what not to do. Yeah, they've experienced good and bad directing, and they're like, well, this is what I enjoyed and what I didn't enjoy about a director, so I'll do the good things and not do the bad things. Yep. Kind of like Clint Eastwood. I don't really like the guy personally, but he seems to be a good director because everybody that works with him says they like him. Nicolas Cage was almost Superman. Yeah, they dodged a bullet with that one. That would not have worked, I don't think. No. You know, would that movie have gotten made? Maybe. Would it have... Would it have made a lot of money? I highly doubt it. Not as much as as it did without him. Yeah. What did Mel Gibson do wrong? He, um... Well, he's anti-Semitic. He's a drunkard. Yeah, he's a womanizer. Yeah. The, the thing that really did him in was he got... He got plastered drunk and got a DUI. 
And while he was being arrested for his DUI, he started going off on the police officers about how uh, the Jewish people were the worst people and they were ruining show business. And I bet you're, uh, he told the cop, like, I bet you're a Jew, aren't you? That's why you hate me. And it was just like, all right, well, that didn't go over well. Yeah, and his uh, mugshot got plastered all over the internet. And uh, it was not pretty. Well, he was super hammered at the time, so he, even after he had said all that bad stuff, he still had this smug look on his face. Yeah. Like and I'm. He looked like some Skid Row drunk in the in the picture. Yeah, I'm Mel Gibson. I'm famous. This isn't gonna do anything to me. But then it was all like, Nah, man, Oops. you kind of, <laughs> kind of fucked yourself up on that one. Yep. It's crazy that he's anti-Semitic because he did Passion of the Christ. Uh, yeah, that's the whole point, I think, is... Uh, that was one of the big... One of the big complaints about, uh, from the Jewish community, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on this, but if I remember correctly, that was a big complaint to the Jewish community when Passion of the Christ came out because... They made it appear as though the Romans had nothing to do with his crucifixion, that it was exclusively the Jewish people that that pushed for his crucifixion. Well, biblically, that's more or less true. Okay, so we are home. Put some stuff on. Oh, sorry. My bad. That's alright. I can open my own door. Eh, turn that off. Okay. Do it here. I know I've got springs. There they are. Oh, I was like, oh, what day is it? <laughs> I heard that thunder crack and I was like, uh oh. Is it that night? Thank goodness. Okay, let's see what 
what can I get rid of? I can get rid of that. That's not what I want. That's melee weapons. Ton of stuff. No, no, those don't go there. I took your gunpowder and put it in an explosives box. Is it done? Yeah. Oh, dang. Two stacks. Well, hell. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. We've got two more days until Horde Night. I guess we're doing Horde Night next time, huh? Probably. I'm going to put the water filters in the water crate. Okay. That makes enough sense.
go in there? Yes, it does. What do I have here? Ammo is done as well. Play in there, I guess. Yeah, it looks like we have plenty of ammo for Horde Knight, because you've got 2,000 rounds in the box. Okay, sounds good. I hope that's enough. <laughs> Should be. If it's not, we're in trouble. Right, I'm going to be putting uh, metal bikes around the house real quick. Okay. I'm replanting the garden. This might come to bite me in the ass, but we're going to try it. Alright, I've checked the water. see how that works.
goes in yeah. weapons. Okay. Looks like pretty good coverage. The spikes? Yeah, I've also got them around the base of the uh, farm. This is like an additional outcropping to hit them with. But I get a sneaking suspicion I'll probably step on it once or twice. Oh yeah. Be like, poke, ow! <laughs> How do traps work? Well, I don't really know. I have not used them. Let's test. All right, so that and that. I think for those to work, you have to have pressure plates, which would be in electronics, if we have any. Something for them to step on to set it off. And then for the pressure plate to work, you have to have it hooked up to battery pa uh, battery bank or something like that. Hmm. But it's probably about time we got into that kind of thing. Trigger plate. Go make some of those. We have some switches. We have one generator bank. Yeah, I'm maxed out on elect on electronics. We have uh, timer relays and wire relays. You can make me that other uh, generator drone mod as well when you get around to it. Armor plating, right? I think so, yeah. All right, it's cooking right there. Okay, thank you. Battery bank. Yeah, that's what we're saving Force. up all the uh, the batteries Force, for the iron, car batteries. Parts, scrap polymer. Do you just recharge these things? How do they they get recharged with the generator, right? Yeah. Uh, let me make a few of these, and then this I have a generator. How do I make generators? Generator bank. 
But it's something that I have not fooled with at all. Barbed wire, electrical wire relay. Okay, we've got some of that. Okay. I haven't messed with it either, obviously, but. We'll get some stuff cooking and then we'll test it out next time and figure out how some of this works. Mm -hmm. That can be our goal for next time is to set up an electrical system. Yeah. Motion sensors, speakers, a relay switch. We're going to want switches so we can turn them on and off. You can do indoor lighting so that you don't have to use torches anymore. Yeah, this is something we're going to have to play with. Figure out. So, what is Acid doing here? Get out of here, Acid. You don't belong in here. Okay, so... Acid, plastic. That. That's going to take like 10 minutes. So I have a wiring tool. We've got we got plenty of wiring tools. Yeah. I've only got one point available. Oh, I haven't even looked at mine. Uh I have three. You'd think we'd have a lot more than that. Where am I getting this extra point of intellect? Oh, it's from my glasses. Engineering advanced items with reduced costs and faster construction time. We're going to be getting into that. I guess I should level that up. 45% XP from building electrical traps. All forge recipes are reduced in cost by 10%. Crafting forge steel and electrical devices costs fifteen percent less components. Man, that's awesome. We're gonna put points into that. I still need the first aid mod for the drone. Uh I don't know if I can make that. I don't think you can yet. I think that's something we have to get the... Uh... Yeah. We either need the book, uh, the the specific schematic for it, yeah. or we need. I need to level up uh, robotics further. Because I'll get it when I max out robotics, but if I can get the, uh, the specific book, I can make it early. Although being drone powered, I'm sure that book is exceedingly rare. All right, so. What is electronic stuff listed under? Tools, no. I don't really know. Science, maybe? No. Huh. Maybe they only appear at the workbench. Yeah, if I go science on the workbench, then I get all the electrical stuff. 
Electric fence. Oh yeah, those are fun. <laughs> Industrial light, fluorescent light. You can do all kinds of stuff with electricity. Man, the electric fence sounds good. They just run into the fence and start getting zapped. Yeah, it's like using a... Uh, one of those... What you call it? Song. <laughs> I can't even think of the word. The baton. Yeah. Well, it's going to take a while to cook. How you feeling about uh, stopping here for tonight? Well, sounds good to me. It's been fun. Yes, ma'am. And then next week we'll um, we'll we'll do some work around here with electrical. Yes. Play with electricity. Wahaha. <laughs> okay. Good night. Night, mom. Terminating operations, system failure. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Very much appreciated. Whoops, that was weird. And I will be back tomorrow.